Stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Mayor, roll call, Tammy, please. Mayor Pete Peterson, absent. Council members Norris Johnson, here. Dave Dillon, here. Corey Peterson, here. Lindsay Larson, here. Uh, can we get a motion to approve the agenda with a few slight changes? You want the changes on there now? Um, no, we'll table them. We'll table them any items them. Okay. that we come across. So approval of the agenda. So second. I have a, a motion by Corey Peterson and a second by Norris Johnson. Yes. Any discussion? We're still doing roll call. All in favor. Okay. Mm -hmm. Lindsay, how do you vote? Yes. Corey? Aye. Dave, aye. Norris? Aye. Motion carries. Approval of minutes from 5 2021 and 6 1 21. Move for approval. Second. Any discussion or changes? I didn't see anything. I'll just make that comment from reading over from the last council minutes. Uh, they were concerned about the 5,000 for nine years, and that was in the resolution. Okay, Norris, how do you vote? Aye. Lindsay? Yes. Corey? Aye. Dave? Aye. <laughs> Motion carries. Approval of bills. So moved. Oh, thank you. <laughs> All seconds. Anything in there, Tammy? I, no. Nope. Uh, Corey? Aye. Dave? Aye. Norris? Aye. Lindsay? Aye. Motion carries. Public hearing, no public hearing. Uh, open forum. Is there anybody here that's not on the agenda that would like to address the council at this time? Hearing none, request communications, update from the state, nothing, right? Uh, the only thing I would mention is about the state's shutdown, the impact to LGA and the ARPA funding. That could, um, could be delayed, but more than likely they'll, they'll get on the case and get their budget passed, so. <laughs> Good. And update on the county. Heard anything? No, except I did mention County Road Two out here is, or I mean Second Avenue is done and looks or straight and looks really good. Um, we can move on to the audit, which I think is why Pete isn't here tonight. So I would have to. Do it. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, yeah. Uh, I'll, I'll introduce Ryan Schmidt. So and he'll be doing a presentation for us, just like he did last year. So just hit the power button here, or what am I? Yep. Okay. There you go. It'll take a little bit to sure, get sure. it set up. I'll try to flip through so I have my own notes to go off of as well. So we'll see if I can do both of these here. All right. All right, here we go. So Ryan Schmidt, Schlenner, Winter and Company, I'm going to walk us through the high level results of your 2020 financial statement audit. Um, I've got a summarized version here, but we did hand out hard copies, or I gave some hard copies to Tammy of the full reports, so you could get the full reports from her if you haven't already. So, uh, also I did hand out the copy of the presentation, you've got that in front of you. But jumping into the first slide here, just going to talk a little bit about the audit process for starters, just a reminder of what we do, what's the purpose of an audit. So essentially we obtain your financial records from throughout the past year, 2020, and we perform a series of tests and procedures over this information, such as inquiries, various analytics, lots and lots of sampling where we're reviewing invoices or uh, reports from the county, the state, etc. Based on these procedures, we then express an opinion on whether or not we feel that your financial statements are accurate. And the opinion that we've given you this year is what's called an unmodified opinion. So that's a clean opinion. It's the same one you've had in the past. It's the best one that you can achieve. Okay, so overall, that's kind of the results. You got that clean opinion, but now how did the audit actually go? 
So this is the slide or, or where we would tell you if there were any difficulties during the audit. You know, did, did we run into any unusual transactions or any issues working with management or staff or anything like that? As you can see, there's nothing along those lines. Everything went very smoothly. We didn't see any weird transactions or accounting policies or procedures that we need to report to you. Everything was kind of what we expected it to be. There is one estimate in the financials we always like to point out. If you're looking through and you see anything about the net pension liability in there or anything related to that, just bear in mind that that's related to the statewide pension plan. It's just your proportionate share of that overall liability, and there's a lot of estimates behind it. There's not much you can do about it. As part of the audit, we also have to look at your internal controls and the processes and procedures that are behind the numbers. And related to that, we do have a few items that we always need to report. Uh, the first of these relates to a lack of segregation of duties. And this is an extremely common finding because of the size of your city. I don't think we have any cities your size or smaller that do not have this finding, simply because you just don't have enough staff on hand involved with the accounting processes to fully segregate all of those duties to the extent that's considered ideal. Uh, the other one we have here relates to financial statement preparation. This is just letting the readers know that we as a third party did prepare your financial statements for the city. And whenever that's the case, there's a heightened risk that some sort of disclosure might be missing or it's something along those lines. Now, the one thing that you don't see up here this year is a finding for material audit adjustments. So last year we did have to have that finding and you were just kind of flirting with that threshold last year where, where we post adjustments, some year end adjustments to help out with getting your numbers to where they need to be. This year we did not have to include that finding because although we did assist with some adjustments, they just weren't sizable enough to trigger that finding. So that's good. And one more thing before we get into the numbers. As part of the audit, we do have to also review your compliance with various Minnesota statutes. So we get checklists from the state that relate to all these different areas that are listed. And we review various transactions from throughout the year on kind of a test basis. Mm -hmm. And we did not have any findings this year related to that. So that's also good news. OK, with that, we'll get into the numbers here. Um, I'm going to keep it pretty high level. But if you do have any questions or want more detail, just let me know. So uh, first couple slides here we have relate to the general fund. So this is where the vast majority of the city's activity lies. Uh, I've got a trend analysis here, 2018 through 2020, and then also the 2020 budget is on there as well on the right-hand side. Um, so just focusing big picture for starters, looking at 2020 actual results compared to the budget, revenues did exceed budgeted amounts by about $328,000, and expenditures also exceeded budgeted amounts, but by about $57,000. Now that table down in the bottom right hand side summarizes those actual numbers and you'll see there's also other sources listed on that table that would be transfers from other funds. So with all of that activity, you had a net increase in your fund balance this year of about $228,000 compared to a budgeted increase of about $133,000. So the next couple slides here break that down into a little further detail. So here we have one that's focusing on the revenues from the previous page, but broken out into different categories, taxes and assessments, intergovernmental, et cetera. So just focusing real quick on areas where you had a little bit of a bigger difference between actual and budgeted results. Um, intergovernmental is the biggest one that stands out to me, the, the one in the middle where that red actual uh, revenues is exceeding budgeted amounts. That difference is primarily due to the coronavirus funding that you received from the state, that extra aid that came through during 2020. Um, the other larger gap that you see there is actually where revenues are below budget a little bit in that charges and uh, fines area. And that would be due to less revenues coming in from, uh, for one thing, the discontinuation of the Ogilvy contract that you used to have, and then also the uh, school resource officer contract. Next page, same sort of layout, looking at uh, expenditures. Um, once again, just focusing on areas where expenditures were deviating from budgeted amounts. And the first one that pops out is on the left-hand side, general government. 
uh, this is where most of those COVID related purchases got coded. So it correlates to that gap that we saw for intergovernmental revenues. This is where the expenses fell. So that's why you're in excess of budget there. Uh, the other larger difference I see here is under public safety. Um, and that was specifically related to, uh, well, most, mostly the police department, also a little bit of fire where you came in under budget. Other than that, pretty close to budget with all of your expenses. Okay, and now this is a very common ratio that we use to look at for your ending unassigned fund balance for the general fund. This is taking that general fund balance at the end of the year and turning it into a percentage of what your annual expenditures are. So you have a policy in place for this percentage or this ratio should be approximately five months of operating expenses, um, which I think comes out to 42% or some, somewhere around there. Um, should probably put that on here, but you can see the percentage that you have at the end of 2020 is 98.5%. So you're well in excess of your minimum threshold there. And if you're just wondering what happened with your cash over the past few years, that's this slide here. You can see you had a bit of a bump with that increase in fund balance. Ended the year with a cash balance of about $2.1 million in the general fund. Okay, so that does it for the general fund. Uh, gonna take a quick look at all the other funds of the city. Um, first slide here, we have your Gorecki Improvement Funds and then also your Veterans Memorial Fund. So for 2020, the only revenues that really came through in the Gorecki Improvement Funds were related to interest earnings and, and maybe a couple other items. Um, but for the most part, the activity there was spending down the donations that you received in prior years. Um, so, of course, you had the Gorecki Center Edition, parking lot, uh, walking trail, pickleball court, etc. With all of that activity uh, and the, the other sources, that's transfers between those funds again there. With all of that activity, <coughs> you had a decrease in your fund balance for the Gorecki Improvement Fund of 119000 a decrease in the Gorecki Improvements 2 fund of about $300,000. And that brings you to ending fund balance of $341,000 and $151,000 uh, respectively. And the last one we have on there is the Veterans Memorial Fund. Of course, that $259,000 is the donation you received, and then you've started up with a few project expenses in 2020. And just the cash balance over the past couple years for each of these. You can see uh, increases in the prior years from these donations, and then you're spending that cash down. And last, governmental funds here. We have your debt service fund, uh, which is just taxes and assessment revenues coming in, and then making those debt service payments for the expenses. And then all of your other non-major smaller governmental funds are wrapped together here. Um, overall debt service, you had an increase in your fund balance, about $41,000. All of your other funds, uh, EDA, TIF districts, uh, revolving loan, et cetera, had an overall decrease of about $57,000. And once again, just showing the cash for both of these categories over the past three years. Both of them you can see have held pretty steady. All right, down to the enterprise funds. Start with the water fund here. Uh, the graph here focuses on operations. So we have operating revenues compared to operating expenses in the actual graph. And then we have a little more detail down at the bottom. Um, 2018 through 2019, you can see this year, we did have a, a little bit of a spike here in your operating expenses. Uh, looks like wages and benefits increased in your water fund, as well as additional repairs and maintenance which brought your expenses up about $127,000 from 2019 to 2020. But even with that increase uh, and, and the rest of the activity in that fund, you did still have an increase in your net position of about $11,000 for the year. Same slide, same layout here for the sewer fund. Um, once again, you had an increase in expenses here, also largely related to wages and benefits. I will point out that this graph, you can see it starts at $270,000, the, the bar on the left-hand side. So the, the fluctuation here isn't quite as significant as what it maybe looks like at first glance. 
Um, and, and then revenues did drop off a little bit here. Um, that was due to fewer uh, fewer receipts from new connections in 2019 or in 2020 compared to 2019. Overall, you had a decrease in this fund balance of about $18,000. And finally, we have your liquor fund. Uh, obviously, 2020 was a great year for pretty much every liquor store that we've audited. Um, you can see sales have gone way up. That's, that's on a net basis after the, the cost of sales, uh, up about $178,000 from 2019 to 2020, and operating expenses up about $87,000. So overall, you had operating income of about $235,000 after transfers out to the general fund and other expenses, you did have an increase in net position still of about $154,000. And just like the other funds, we have a quick slide here showing the cash changes over the past few years for all three of these categories. Liquor has been on an upward trend, as you can see, and with some improvements that you had related to the water and sewer infrastructure, that's kind of what's causing that drop off you see there in 2020. Okay, so that does it for all the fund level financial statements. Uh, last, I just have two slides here quick that talk about uh, everything wrapped together on kind of the government wide basis. So this is with long term assets wrapped in uh, long term debt on the next slide wrapped in um, just kind of seeing how things have changed for the entire city. You can see looking at assets, not a whole lot has moved here. Assets have held pretty steady overall from 2019 to 2020. Uh, a little bit of an increase in your capital assets as you've put money into your projects and infrastructure, but um, not a whole lot of movement. On the other hand, looking at the next slide, uh, we do have a bit of a decrease here in your debt. Uh, so the red bar, which is your long-term debt, is primarily where you're seeing that decrease and that's just due to you making those scheduled payments on your outstanding debt. And that green bar on the right-hand side, that's that net pension liability I talked about. There's not a whole lot you can do about that. It's your proportionate share of PARA's statewide deficit. And finally, just that long-term debt broken out between governmental funds, uh, which is primarily financed by taxes and assessments, compared to business type funds being financed by your water and sewer funds. Uh, both of them decreased from 2019 to 2020. So that's all I have for a presentation. Um, one additional item I wanted to mention, uh, the audit went very smoothly and, and any, any issues we worked through uh, were not an issue at all really, but I do know that through my discussions with Tammy and Jessica, there's been a little bit of uh, issues that have been run into with Banyan as far as getting reports to run properly and, and getting information to be recorded the way that it should and reconcile the way that it should. And Banyan has uh, apparently not been very, very supportive with their customer support. And I just wanted to mention that this is something that I've seen at a couple other cities um, I know you guys are looking at civic systems as a potential option. We do work with several cities that use civic systems. We've heard good things. Um, so that's my plug for civic systems. It's, <laughs> it's, a, it's a decent software. So. Yeah. Other than that, any questions? Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you Ryan. Okay. Turn this off? Yeah. If there's no other questions, then I'll entertain a motion to accept the audit. I'll make a motion. I'll second. <clears throat> um, and the motion was by Lindsay and seconded by Corey? Corey. Yep. Okay. Well, let's start with you, Norris. Aye. Lindsay? Aye. Corey? Aye. Dave? Aye. Motion passes. Um, now we can jump right into the fund balance, or the fund balance, the fund accounting software, the proposal. Do you want to go through that, Tammy? Or, or um, Jessica, Jessica will okay, present. I don't have a PowerPoint, so I'll say that. <laughs> <laughs> um, so the reason I'm here tonight is to propose a budget adjustment in 2021 to purchase the new fund accounting software. Um, the team has conducted two software reviews and analyzed each system based on our specific needs. 
Uh, as a result, we feel it's necessary to move away from Banyan. As Ryan stated, it is a difficult system to use. Um, and implementing a new software that has integrated modules, is able to grow with us, provides enhanced security and internal controls would be very beneficial to the team. Um, since March, I've been working with Banyan software and have quickly realized that there's several difficulties of the software and how it affects all of us in our day-to-day -day operations. Uh, the software is outdated. Um, it was implemented over 20 years ago and does not provide flexibility to change or allow um, for updates to fit our city's needs. The data integrity issues that we have been encountering with several system errors that occur on a regular basis have been causing, it, um, causing issues for us to be able to complete our work without having to log out of the system and log back in the system or lose our um, previous entries that we put in, put in there. Um, I did provide a few screenshots um, in a handout that I gave to you guys here on your, your desk there that show what the errors are that we're encountering um, along with a couple cost proposals. In addition to the data integrity issues, we have support issues with Banyan where they do not return our calls. The per person we talk to doesn't know um, how to help us. And if we get an answer, it could be a several days later. There's a lack of integration between the different modules. Not one of them will talk to each other. There's no way to import data. Everything is done manually. Reports are not user friendly and are difficult to modify or create. Uh, cash and investments are currently tracked in Excel. This causes interest earnings, bank reconciliations, purchases, and sale of investments to be tracked manually and entered into Banyan manually. Currently, the team is using one system user login, and as a result, there's no audit trail to ensure security and internal controls are in place. As Ryan stated, internal controls for our size of our city is very common to have that segregation of duties not be there. However, in the system, when we're all tapping in there at the same time, it is nice to be able to see who's doing what, who made what entry, and be able to go back to that person and ask them um, how to correct it. Um, payroll involves using manual timesheets, requiring manual data entry into payroll each pay period. Our accounts receivable is basically a, an Excel invoice and is tracked manually through Excel. There's no way to get an aging report to see who's paid, who's not paid, and making sure that the city is receiving their payments timely. What we're looking for is a stable platform that offers reliable support, knows our market and specific needs, has a proven product and track record, and is able to implement the software based on our specific needs. Based on that, we are recommending um, Civic Systems Connect software, which Ryan had also mentioned. Um, they do have an option to uh, a three-year three financing plan with 0% interest. Tammy and I reviewed that. We feel that's the best option for the city at this point. Um, I did give that proposal to you as well. So the first initial installment would be $28,554. And then each year, there would be two additional payments once each year. Civic does offer a reliable, stable, and secure platform. The system was developed with and by CPAs and auditors. They know our market and the, the unique needs of the city of Malacca. Civic Systems offers software for life. There's no upgrade fees or additional costs with their support plat platform. We, can, we also conducted a review with the city of Cambridge, watched how they utilize the system, some of the system features that they have um, that they utilize today are importing data through Excel, which is what they have said was one of their lifesavers over there. They're able to scan in data documents to attach to records within the system, which would help with auditing um, and help with when we're going through the audit process. The Civic would also increase visibility for employees and department heads by allowing them to use an employee and manager self-service portal. They would be able to view department reports, submit their time off, approve time off, review paychecks, review time cards and approve time cards, and update their personal information. This would eliminate a lot of paper that we're currently utilizing today. So what I'm recommending is that we pay for the software using liquor store funds. 
The liquor store has just over $1 million available to use. I propose a transfer of $28,554 in July in conjunction with the current monthly transfer of $12,924.50, totaling $50,478.50 in July, and then resuming back to the $12,000 transferred each month. This would allow us to sign the contract and get the process for implement, implementation of civic systems going in 2021. My question was on the, the investment summary page, about 40 pages in. <laughs> <laughs> For me, yeah. It okay. says total investment 59,070, but then underneath says annual support 8864. That's a one-time fee, I'm assuming, is that in addition to the 5970? Um, just a sec here. So the annual support is an ongoing fee. The 59,000 is the total investment to get the system up and running, which is our uh, license fees, the training, and the conversion. The annual support would be ongoing each year. Is that what you're asking? So you pay $8,000, but it says software for life provides you the assurance you'll never have to purchase another upgrade. Isn't $8,000 a year the upgrade? Uh, or not. not typically. The upgrade is like if they go to a newer version. A newer. We they, don't pay for those. Right. Okay. The the support fee is for for us calling and asking questions. Okay, so it's for more than just guarding yeah. against. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Yep. And they okay. have on their um, portal on their website they have a customer portal where we can go in and and get training for free or not free but typically through this cost we would be provided training on an ongoing basis. Um, the support calls, anything that we would need help with, they would be able to do for us with that cost. Okay. And that's something you do not get now from Banyan, really? Do you? No, we're paying yeah. probably just about the same amount every year uh, to Banyan, and we do not get very good support with them. Okay. Um, and no training. And you no training. You have to pay for your training. Yep. Okay. Correct. Is there a reason that we didn't have this discussion when we were setting the budget uh, and including that for the upcoming budget? No, it's just we're looking at what we need now. and We didn't need just that like, when we were setting up the budget a few months ago? Well, we didn't look at it that closely then. We've mm -hmm. encountered more errors than we ever have in the past with the system. Uh, one of the biggest errors that we found was a year end in the audit. It referred back to a 2019 and Banyan mm -hmm. couldn't even tell us why it did it. Mm -hmm. And they had to go in and fix it. So we don't need errors like that to happen. And we don't need a software system that's going to give us bogus numbers. Yeah, so then we really started to look at it as far as this is not working the way so it, was, it should be. It was the audit that really brought a lot of the issues kind of up to the forefront and, and made it. Yeah, and, and the, daily, the daily errors that we get every day. Okay. Execution errors and then you shut down your system and you got to start over. You know, so those are beginning to, too, too common every day, multiple times. You shouldn't have that. I think in we talked about it for about a year, but then the latest, that last stuff, yeah. that we got it kind of pushed it over the top. Yeah. Like it's got to be done. Anything else? Nope, nope, unless you have more questions. I don't. We'll get a motion to approve the software proposal. Yeah, so move. Now, as as uh, with the three year financing as proposed here. I'll second that. Any other discussion or questions or any regarding it? How, when could they do this? And when could we make the switch if it gets would, passed? If it passes tonight, I'll call them tomorrow. Mm -hmm. <laughs> See okay. how and it, it'll take about three months for full implementation from our system that we currently have going through all of the changes that we need to do. Um, and they anticipate three months. It can sometimes be longer. And they help do that. Yeah, right. yeah all the yep. way. Okay. They come on site. 
Oh, okay. Yeah, there, if needed. There's no additional fees from Banyan for bailing early. Are we no. going to get a refund or something? Because we oh, pay, no. you know what I mean? Because we're yeah. not using them for the rest of the year. We can certainly check to see if they would reimburse us for our annual fee. Yeah, that's a good idea. Mm -hmm. Okay, hearing nothing else, uh, I will start, I guess. Uh, vote aye. Norris? Aye. Lindsay? Aye. Corey? Aye. The motion passes. You can call tomorrow, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, ordinances and resolutions. Resolution 2132, donations to the Veterans Memorial. Uh, we need to make a motion for one amendment to it to change. I don't have it in front of me. It's Princeton Trading Post. Is that correct? No, and then it should be for Harry's Mosquito. It should mosquito. be Harry Mosquito. Yep. And the resolution for signature has been revised. I think it's one of the top ones, isn't it? Yep. Yeah. Do you need a motion for the change first, the amendment first? Or can it be yeah. all in one? Yep. We will just make a motion to amend amendment. the resolution. Okay. I'll make that motion. No second. No discussion. Lindsay? Aye. Corey? Aye. Dave? Aye. Norris? Aye. Now you need the resolution for 2132, the Veterans Memorial, with the um, amendment. Yes. All right, I'll make that motion. Second. No other discussion. Lindsay? Aye. Corey? Aye. <clears throat> Dave, aye. Norris? Aye. Passes. You good on that one, Tammy? You got it. Okay, 2133, resolution to accept the American Rescue Plan Act funding. We're going to motion and then explain it. Uh, move for approval. Second. Uh, that's just for us to be ready when that money is coming available, correct? Yep, and we have already submitted our application to receive the funds through the MMB. So uh, they do not know exactly at this time what our amount will exactly be because they haven't figured all that out yet. But we were told somewhere it's about 300000 plus. So, So I made the resolution to cover anything of the amount that we would be getting. So. Good. Norris, how do you vote? Aye. Lindsay? Aye. Corey? Aye. Dave? Aye. <coughs> okay, ordinance number 483, the second reading, amending chapter 95, animals and land use, chapter 156 and 154. Seems like we've had this on forever. We <laughs> <laughs> need a motion to approve. Uh, so moved. You guys want a second? I'll second. <laughs> Any discussion on that? I think we've been through it. I think. Marshall, we're kind of good on it. Nothing new has come up. Unless you want changes. <laughs> <laughs> I think we're good. <laughs> Norris, we're okay, you think? Yeah. So. Perfect. So. Okay, Corey, how do you vote? Hi. Dave, I. Norris? Aye. Lindsay? Yes. Passes. Reports and Department, City Manager. Uh, just give a, a brief update to here about um, you know, some of the functions over the last couple of weeks has been pretty heavy with audit and uh, final audit wrap up. Working with uh, w looking at webinars about the ARP funding and um, seeing what our eligible uses are. Wish I knew what the amount was so that we can work on that part of the process was they said that you can put it in your 2022 budget So we will definitely see that number in there once we have the final number and know what that is so Some budget um, items that we'll start working on you know, the budget committee will work through those but then we'll work with the personnel committee start working on some some budget talks so That's that's what I have Okay, police activity report, body-worn camera policy. Uh, <clears throat> excuse me. There doesn't necessarily need to be a lot of discussion on it, uh, unless you guys have questions, if you've had a chance to review it. 
Um, just to let you know, I mean, a lot of the language within there is based off a of statutory requirement. It's uh, the, uh, what you have in front of you was, uh, I worked off of the League of Minnesota Cities model policy for body-worn cameras. So if you were to see the policy for most other cities who are deploying or have body cameras, it's going to read uh, pretty much the same. I just wanted to make a note that when you end up seeing the final version, there'll be some slight changes. There's a couple of placeholders in there that regard the actual system itself uh, for data retention, which would be WatchGuard for us, that obviously until we receive that training and implement that, um, it's just being left open so the proper language can be plugged in uh, once that's finished, which just to give you an update, uh, WatchGuard will be here next week, the 21st through the 23rd, to get systems set up and uh, get us going on on the body cameras and the squad cameras. Um, in the final version, you'll also see that there were some changes to on mine, and it might be slightly different for you. Find it here. Believe, believe it should be uh, roughly page four and five under the header of downloading and labeling data. The, um, the items and their definitions that were included uh, originally that you have in your copy and I could provide you with a new copy and if anyone in the uh, audience would like a copy as well <coughs> I can provide them with one too um, but we just basically what you see was the generic labeling for so when I um, finish with a call uh, there's a requirement that I label it and that links into the data retention for that um, specific call um, we've obviously chosen our own just to kind of give you a quick run through. Um, ours are warning, uh, which would be uh, like a traffic related warning, citation, accident, call for service non criminal, call for service criminal, call for service major incident, DUI drug, and test or accidental. Um, other than that, like I said, it's a lot of this is, as you can see, there's uh, Statute numbers plugged in there, here and there. It's it's going to be fairly similar from city to city. Their body worn camera policies. Do you have any questions? I meant to bring one of the cameras over just so you guys could see it ahead of us deploying them. Um, and uh, I just I forgot to walking over here. So um, if you are interested, let me know. I can show you what our body cameras look like. I could have uh, the my squad right now until we uh, get the new squad. <laughs> this fall isn't going to have the squad camera installed. It just doesn't make sense. Um, but our other two explorers already have the cameras installed and ready for watch guard when they come here next week. And did I see you having like an open house or? Yep. Yeah, so I, actually, meeting? even at this meeting, um, I don't believe there is. But if there's anyone who uh, uh, had any comments or questions. Um, we could field them here now. Otherwise, next week, the 23rd at 6 p.m. here at City Hall, um, I'll be hosting a community meeting for anyone who may have questions. The policy will be available to them. And then uh, once everything's set, the final version of the policy will be posted within the police department section of uh, the city website. Good. Thanks, Quinn. Yeah. So you want a motion to approve this, right? And okay. we can do that with the placeholders in there? Like we this? can. Okay. So can we get a motion to approve the body-worn camera policy? So move. I will second that. Okay, no other discussion. Uh, Norris? Aye. Dave, aye. Corey? Aye. Lindsay? Yes. That was it for police, right? Yeah. Okay. Um, parks? Yeah, <laughs> did a good job in the kitty parade. Yeah. <laughs> um, Park Zach Zomer was going to be here, but he cannot. He didn't have the information yet, right? Correct. And it's Wednesday golf week. <laughs> <laughs> um, Parks, that's yep. you, Gary. So there's a few items tonight for the council to consider. Um, I guess we could go over the warming house and rec park first. Um, there's a picture and a description in front of you. It's 20 or 36 by 16. Um, this price is just for an empty building. The shell 
Um, once it comes, we would have it spray foamed by a company and then um, finish off the electrical and interior ourselves. Um, and that would be placed in Rec Park, um, kind of where the gravel parking is right now. Mm -hmm. So that'd be the idea. Um, all the park board members, minus, I never heard from Corey, but everybody else got back and everyone's pretty, likes it, I don't know. Is so. this just on skids kind of yep, thing? Yep, it's on okay. skids. Um, it's coming from Zimmerman Nursery. So they're eight weeks old only, which isn't, I didn't think too bad considering what you hear from other things right now. So that would give us enough time to have it brought down here and then spray foam it, finish the interior. And then the idea was, so you can't see it in the picture, but on the back side, there'll either be a double door or a garage door. And then down the road with the continued increase in use in Rec Park, there'd be opportunity to rent equipment out of it. Um, or um, if there's a large event down there, they could utilize this building in the summer as a check-in point or another meeting area. It would be pretty large, so. And this would be paid out of fund 217 from the donation funds. Yeah, well, we had, we had set aside $150,000 for a warming house <coughs> and 22,000 for this or 23, um, some rough numbers. I think it'll be 35, 40,000 by the time it's fully spray foamed and um, finished on the interior with electrical and uh, wood paneling and everything. So I think that'll suit all of our needs down there for a warming house. Did you talk to Pete at all today by chance? Okay, because yep. I know he had mentioned this to me this morning. And yep. I to make he was sure just you curious about um, how we we're going to finish the interior and yep. what it, if it came finished or not. And he was in support of so it. So if it's on skids, how do you get, and you're on skates, how do you get from A to B? I mean, you just stick, like, are you on wood in there with skates on? Or are you gonna no, we like have all something? those rubber mats from the, that we put down in the Garecki oh, building. Oh, you just put them in there? Yeah, we just Perfect. put the whole floor, be rubber mats in the wintertime. Okay. And then you can remove them in the off season. Okay. And there'd be a rubber, so we have a rubber mat that would go on that wood deck there for walking across so it doesn't get wrecked. Okay, good. Does that have a finished floor of some kind or what is it? Uh, the floor is just plywood, so we'd finish it with, uh, I guess, all kinds of different options. I haven't decided on a floor interior yet, but. Rubber mats for the time being. Mm -hmm. Yep. <laughs> And then they'd spray foam the underneath of it and the interior walls, so um, it'd be easy to heat. And then in the summer, if it did get used by different groups. I think either a window air conditioner or a little mini split unit would work just fine there. Um, do I want to just go through the whole list? Or do I was going to ask you on them separate Separate, motions? yeah. Okay. So I'll entertain a motion for the building, the warming house for Rec Park. I'll make the motion. Second. Uh, Lindsay? Aye. Corey? Aye. Dave? Aye. Norris? Aye. Motion passes. Now we go to the, we want to go to the boards and the concrete? Yeah. Okay. So this has been on the park commission list for a long time now. Um, the horseshoe pits don't get used very often at all and there's four of them so we're going to remove two of them and then put these concrete um, cornhole bag boards down there so there'd be two sets um, they're super heavy and thick concrete and durable so that's the idea that they won't get damaged in the last long time and then we're I mean this is just for the boards but we're floating around different ideas for the bags down there whether we just put a big bin down there and see how long it lasts or uh you know down the road when that warming house gets utilized for a rental or something we can have a bunch of bags in there for people to check out otherwise i think there's plenty of people that have cornhole at home and when they have get togethers down there can bring their own too so mm -hmm. and the 1134 that's just that's per, per set per set yeah okay. so it'd be double that so how much do they weigh they're not likely to walk away. Yeah, they're like 500 pounds okay. per board. <laughs> <laughs> that should stay put. Yeah. 
All right. Can we get a motion on the boards then? So me. Oh, I'll second then. Okay. I'll start with Corey this time. How do you vote? Aye. Dave, aye. Norris, aye. Lindsay, aye. Okay. And now we're to the archery range. So archery has been brought up on the park commission on and off for the last couple of years. A couple of years ago when we brought it up, I know. we were unsure of insurance and different liabilities with it. So, and we had a hundred other ideas to get to first. So um, now that we're kind of coming down on the list and saving money on other items, I started, I called our the League of Minnesota cities and archery is a covered activity on city property already. That's how other cities and counties get away with having archery ranges. They don't have to add anything. It's just a covered activity. So there's no issues there. Um, started looking at different spots where it would, where I think it would work best. And there's general guidelines you should fall, follow from the League of Minnesota Cities, which are pretty common sense. Um, and with how busy our parks are, I think those wouldn't be the spot. Um, so this... If you can see in the picture there, that old baseball field just north of the airport is about an acre and a half of uh, hay field right now. It's pretty flat from being an outfield. And the idea is to turn it into the larger picture up above there. Um, the blue area would be for more youth age. Um, those, yeah, as you can see in the bottom picture, it'd just be a concrete pad with a <coughs> post to hang your bow in there. <coughs> Um, all the different stations which the targets are hung underneath and then the elevated platform would be for people to practice um, just getting in that angle for hunting I suppose and the 3d course those are popular all over the state now people travel around doing those I kind of worked with the um, school archery coaches in coming up with this design and the DNR also, they do a lot of designing on different layouts, so they kind of walked me through this. Um, I've had, I haven't even really talked to too many people about it, just a couple phone calls to people that I know are in archery in the area of Malacca, and word is spreading, and I'm getting a lot of phone calls about interested and excited people. Um, yeah, there's 130 students in archery in Malacca, and I think it'd be a pretty good fit for the community. And the cost for 35000 majority of that cost is in that raised platform and targets. Um, the rest of it is going to be, I think there's going to be a huge turnout in community volunteering to get it done. And then there's just maintenance is just going to be mowing, so it's not going to be a lot of continued costs besides the bag replacement every once in a while, but... Yeah, there's probably a grant or two out there, too, that's... Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I was yeah. talking right. with the DNR about grants for right now. They haven't approved anything for 2021. It's hung up in legislation, the DNR said, so he doesn't know if there's going to be any available, but he said there usually is, so most places get grants. So well, that'd be huge. something we could keep the working for. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, oh, Alexandria just had a huge event in... Yeah, yeah. it is a big deal. Oh. Would this be something that's used seasonally, or yeah, it'd be May through April, May through October, okay. mm -hmm. and then for reference, like Whitcombs in Princeton, they're only open in the winter for students to shoot. So it's kind of like ideal where you get the full season covered, and you're not taking people away from indoor ranges because they're not open. What What is this uh, walking course on the, on the picture off to the right? Yep. So that's It'd be a trail going through the woods. We'd brush cut it there. It's really thick woods right there, which is nice because the runways, well, it's a few, at least a couple hundred yards to the east here, but that's thick woods. So you'd brush cut a trail through there and then each one of those red dots, that's not an exact number, but they'd be like a 3D target. And then hmm. it's kind of like disc golf where you go to each station, you shoot and you get points for where you hit it on the target and they keep track on a scorecard. Mm -hmm. Oh, so it's pretty there's a lot of people that travel the state just doing 3D shoots, so. Mm -hmm. And there's plenty of room for parking. Um, talk to MnDOT, being that it is kind of a 
airport city land and so far no issues so good deal but this must also be covered by grants no right now there's no grants available I'm looking but for this would it, in the for future? continual maintenance i okay. think so and then uh for the cost right now where would those funds come from the Gorecki the Gorecki funds okay 216 216 so the savings there was 150 set aside for the warming house it's not going to be near that and then the park board turned down the which we considered the lighting on the pathway that was an idea but the cost was huge mm -hmm. um, we got a few different quotes and it was the benefit wasn't there for the price so for right now we're not doing that so okay All right. Can That's I get a got. motion on the archery range? I'll make that motion. No second. Any other discussion? Oh, uh, Norris, how do you vote? Aye. Uh, Lindsay? Aye. Corey? Aye. Dave? Aye. Looks good, Gary. Right, cool. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. All the work side of things. We've been a busy week seal coating. Um, the company that's contracted for getting a cleaning sewer, so hopefully nobody's having any issues there. But um, the street patching should be happening on Friday. Mm. Where, a little dirt patch. I swear. Yeah. A little by little dirt patch. Yeah, it should be happening on Friday. Begging them to go. Um, and then the parking lots. The City Hall liquor store, um, those are going to get done uh, early July, I think, right after the 4th. So, a lot coming up. Good. Good. And I did get my seasonal positions filled. They're all in the last couple of days. So, oh, good. That's a relief. All right. Uh, moving on to the liquor store. Uh, that is tabled, and we still don't have that information yet, right? Correct. Okay. Planning Commission. <laughs> No Nothing? No, no meeting? No. Okay. Fire, Jesse's here. Isn't he? Anything from you guys? Mm -hmm. uh, we applied for a grant from the Benton Co-op, or Benton County Co-op Foundation, or Benton Co-op, um, and they granted it to us for, we're going to buy another set of extrication tools. Um, the grant, the price of the purchase was like 35000 and they gave us a grant of $17,500. Um, so our golf tournament actually has gotten us out there to find these grants to these companies because we've been asking them for donations and they can't donate to that sort of a thing. But they're like, we have grants and we found two other ones that we're applying for. So, so it's actually been a really good deal that way. Um, we are doing a training burn, weather permitting, on June 28th. If it doesn't get, if we don't get any rain, the DNR is probably not going to let us do that. Otherwise, I don't have much else. All right. Okay, thanks. <laughs> Short and sweet, Jeff. <laughs> um, the airport. Contractors pay request payment number one, $157,010.30. <laughs> Phase one taxiway project, 95% of costs is reimbursed under the MinDOT, MnDOT grant agreement. The city share would be 785051 I think it was all in the packet, wasn't it? Yeah. Okay. Motion for that? So moved. Second. Anything else we need on that, Tammy? Nope, that should do it. No other questions? That's quick and easy. Yeah. Corey? Aye. Dave? Aye. Norris? Aye. Lindsay? Aye. Passes committees, economic development, we meet Monday morning, and our topic of discussion coming up here is um, housing. We've had requests from Superintendent Whedon, um, some business owners. We just don't have a lot of, of good quality housing. Um, and they're looking at the idea of what can we do to try and get some more nice apartments, um, housing rentals, whatever. Mm -hmm. Uh, so that's going to be the discussion there. And one other topic, and I cannot remember what it was. I thought there was two things on the agenda. Maybe it was just that. Um, oh, yeah, the business, the business subsidy. Yeah, which I think we're, we couldn't pass because we didn't have a quorum. 
You guys already know about that. We passed it. Um, personnel. Uh, we'll just start Nothing. working on budget process. So we'll be rolling in some meetings here real soon. Uh, the personnel uh, policy that we are working on there kind of got side swiped here with the audit and all. So I'm about halfway through that, getting that updated. So we'll get back at that, get working on that. So that'll be upcoming too. Okay, on the budget, I know Pete wanted to talk about council ideas and we're gonna table that and move that to the July meeting. So we can still come up with ideas if anybody has any for the upcoming budget. Um, Veterans Memorial update. We have had a raft of um, donations that you've seen by the resolution. They are piling in um, with the um, commitment from First National, uh, First National Bank of that 10,000, there's all, like 20,000 left for them to to um, get more donations and they'll reach that $100,000 commitment. So it went really fast. So that was, that was good to see. Yeah. Tim was in my office quite a bit. I mean, just the excitement of everything going on with these larger donations coming in and he'd come in and hand me another check and just to really excited, so. It's going to be a great project, and as you've seen, it's just about wrapped up. The obelisk will get uh, probably put in place in probably September, we're hoping. By that time, the, that'll be placed, plus the benches and any other monuments that they were going to place should be done then. Looks really nice, really it nice. Does. Okay, on the joint powers, anything with... No. Nope. Building Tourism Board next meeting is July 29th. Unfinished business, Fairview Malacca Healthcare update. If you saw the paper today, I have not seen the paper I today, seen the paper. but it should be in there. They were going to put out a press release that made it on time, uh, explaining the proposal that Fairview has for the Malacca area that will include um, some on site care through a medical assistant that'll have. Basically, space for routine stuff like um, blood pressure checks, um, strep tests, they can check ears, all that stuff. Uh, then there'll also be space for um, online telehealth, and then that person can help walk them through that. They also can do things with scopes and back to Fairview, so they can do like ear checks and throats and all that stuff. So there'll be some on. It, it won't be like a full clinic, but you'll be able to do a lot of things on site. And then it'll also include um, a mobile lab that'll come up to be able to dry your labs and get that done. And then they want to do, um, I can't remember exactly what they call it, an RX, something with food, where they not only provide food, but they provide like um, how to use it and menus and simple uses of it. Um, so you can build a healthier uh, lifestyle. It, it's gone over well in Rush City, and they'd like to try it here. Uh, that's all in the press release in, in this week's paper, so you should be able to read that. Um, and we're still looking at options and keeping things open and seeing what happens. But I think it, it's really, it looks like we will have health care in our community by the fall of some sort. So mm -hmm. that's good nice. news. Yeah. Um, new business, special event at Wreckfest. Special event is Wreckfest, July 21st through July 25th, and a jam event on September 9th through September 12th. We need to add to which one? Wreckfest? The alcohol Wreck tasting? Yeah. Right. So on the alcohol or on the Wreckfest, there is an alcohol tasting that will be added to the special event licensure. So we need a motion to approve those special events. I'll make the motion. I'll second. Any other discussion? Lindsay, how do you vote? Yes. Corey? Aye. Norris? Aye. Dave? Aye. Motion passes. And we got a call special meeting for July 1st for the street reconstruction bids and bonds. We're still on schedule to do that, correct? Yep, the bid opening is the 21st. Okay. Um, so as far as bonds, the, the finalizing of the bonds will probably be done in August. Okay. Should we get a motion for the special meeting? So move. I'll second that. Norris, how do you vote? Aye. Lindsay? Yes. 
Corey? Aye. Dave? Aye. No, there's no miscellaneous. Council comments. Lindsay? Oh, you missed. What, what did I miss? 17. Oh, because I, I yep. scratched it off on mine. That's why. <laughs> we had, yep. we had the, the closed meeting we are going to table. And, and it said to send to personnel, but I think we're going to probably end up bringing it back to council for full council review. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. that'll be more like the July meeting if all goes well. Now we can go to council comments. Sorry. Lindsay? I don't have any. Corey? No. North? Uh, was a Exciting to see the, the body cams. I think that's a great mm -hmm. step forward. I, yeah, lots of, for lots of uh, good applications for that. So, and also, I drove here on a brand new. <laughs> Isn't that nice? <laughs> <laughs> I scootered on it. <laughs> yeah, they really did it's a nice, nice job. It's, it's so much smoother than, than yeah. the old winter version. Yes. <laughs> yeah. yeah, they did a really that good was, job. That was bad. But, uh, that yep. was all. Yep. I don't have anything except parade tomorrow night. Mm -hmm. No. Okay. That's about it. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. Second. Yep. <laughs> Lindsay? Yes. Corey? Aye. Dave? Aye. Norris? Aye.